Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's going to be a little controversial, but I'm going to also share my process into how I write patterns. And so this whole thing's kind of a mess and I guarantee you like 99.9% .9 of you don't even realize like what happened. Um, but I just want to be transparent about things. So I'm like addressing the situation because I feel like that's like my job in this position. And full disclosure, I don't want to be like known for like bad things, like stealing people's patterns. So uh, I'm like clearing the air about that for like my own sake, but also because this is like an important topic. Uh, so I had filmed this video based on what had already gone down and like I'll leave all that footage, we'll put it in after. Um, but I had to come back and like redo this intro because I just realized something that like for one further proves my case and for two um, just raises like a good point. Uh, so I had in a video said that like my process for like making my own patterns kind of comes from like evolving somebody else's pattern to like make it better in my eyes. Like, I don't remember my exact wording, but that was like the gist. Um, I don't mean that I have, you know, somebody else's pattern here. I've got mine side by side. Okay, this row is like this. Let me change this. I mean, I've made patterns um, because I do market prep. Uh, I've made certain patterns like enough times to like know how the pattern works. Uh, so like, I just have that information in my head. It just exists. So when I'm writing my own pattern for something, like I don't like making dinosaurs. And I was using a dino pattern that I liked, but I didn't like everything about it. So I like sat down to write my own dino pattern that was more like my style, the features that I like in a pattern. And now I have that dino pattern. Um, so I do think that's an acceptable thing to do. I do think if you step back and look at the fact that there's like a thousand dino patterns, a thousand mushroom patterns, a thousand bee patterns, a thousand granny square blanket patterns, um, that people are just rewriting these patterns for themselves in a way that they like it. So yeah, but in my original video later, and like that is an error, I mistakenly cited the pattern that I like was inspired from as a handmade by Hennick pattern. And that's because they have a pocket dino pattern. The pattern that I was thinking of is a pocket dino pattern. And I do happen to own like a good handful of handmade by Hennick patterns. Um, because I don't know, I like that shop. <laughs> uh, so when I when this was going down originally, I had like seen somebody's comment saying that don't listen to me, you can't do that. This is basically stealing from people. And I just wanted to like, for one, I replied to that person's comment, like pumping the brakes, like, whoa, I was like inspired by that pattern, but my pattern is like in fact different. Uh, and I think it is acceptable to do that because that's why so many patterns for the same thing exist. Um, I did not, I was not directly influenced, like I didn't have it out in front of me, but I was directly influenced in the sense of, I didn't like the fact that the like arms were slip stitched on after, and I didn't like the fact that the like points like curled over. So when I say I was directly influenced, I just eliminated features that I didn't like in my own pattern. Like, why would I want to slip stitch on arms when I didn't like that? Like... I do like a bobble stitch arm and leg, and you can see that in a couple of my patterns. So I took that feature from doing it in other patterns and used it in my own. And I think we can all, the first time I ever did it was in, I think it was the Chunky Boy Mushroom pattern. I used a bobble stitch arm and leg there, and now it's in my other patterns. And I think we can all agree that I'm not stealing from the Chunky Boy Mushroom pattern because I'm using the same feature in other patterns. So to make sure because I got a little bit defensive at first. I wasn't rude, but I just wanted to like clarify by comment that situation. But then I started like second guessing myself. I'm like, maybe okay. I'm wrong and I don't know how this whole thing with pattern writing works. But I mean, I just figured like, like I said, they exist because people are just rewriting patterns to their own preferences. Uh, so I went to my Facebook group that has like 80,000 people, asked that same question. Like if there was an original dino pattern and I remade, a similar pattern without directly writing them off of each other. And I changed the arms, the legs, the spikes, which is basically all the features in the original pattern. Um, do you think that's different enough? And do you guys like understand like the progression, how I went kind of from that area to like my own pattern 
and do you think that's like an acceptable progression? And out of like a hundred comments, I had like 98 in favor of like what I did and like 2% um, that said like, no, if you're like this defensive, you've obviously done something wrong. Uh, even though I had put pictures of like a screenshot from the pattern, uh, like a picture from the pattern um, and like my finished product side by side. Uh, they're like, yeah, they're way too similar. Uh, I think it's like you're clearly not taking this serious and you're just looking for validation even though you stole. So like they were a little bit mean, I'm not going to lie. But the funny thing is, uh, and this is why this whole like redo the beginning of the video exists. The funny thing is I don't actually own that particular pocket dino pattern that I like held them up side by side for like the comparison. Um, I own Sweet Softies pocket dino pattern. So the people that said that my version was too similar to the Handmade by Hen Hennig pattern and that I therefore did in fact copy, this literally proves I didn't because I don't own that pattern. I've never seen that pattern. So it was purely coincidental that my T-Rex pattern looked like another T-Rex pattern because I've never actually seen that particular pattern, uh, which I really think like all around the board validates that I didn't steal because I don't even know which one I supposedly stole from. Yeah, so any similarities between my own pattern and the pattern that I put up the side-by-side -side pictures of was purely coincidental because I don't own that pattern. And I know these people could technically go back and say, okay, fine, you didn't steal from Handmade by Hennick, but you stole from Sweet Softies. But I had realized that it was a different pattern when I literally tried to take like a snippet, just like a small snippet, a couple of rows, middle of the pattern, like not enough to do anything with. Um, but I did a snippet from like the original pattern and then my pattern, uh, same rows and everything, because now I'm quite sure there's no legal basis for this. But um, people in the comments were saying that as long as like 30% is different, um, then it's not like it's different enough that it's not copying or whatever, stealing, whatever term you want to use. And I don't think there is like a specific number. And I actually later learned there is like no copyright protection for the actual like how is this worded for the actual steps in the pattern there's no copyright for there's only copyright for like the formatting of the pattern i guess no, i don't know i'm not a lawyer um i'm not worried about this person coming after me because like it, she owns her pattern so if she really wants to like see mine to compare like i'll give it to her because there's really nothing happening um but i took about just about 30 percent of the original pattern and like my rows from like that same section and like you could see they were like clearly different. Um, but then they like made me take it down because they're like, yeah, you're only allowed to share like a couple of rows. If you need help, you don't need help. You just need validation. I'm like, yes, I do need validation because I, I'm like in a little bit of like a leadership educational position here. Um, so like it's my job to make sure I'm not advocating for you guys to do messed up things. Um, so that's one, two. I obviously don't want like a thousand people thinking I'm sitting here stealing. That's kind of important to me, just like as a person, not as a business owner. Also about me, I just really wanted to like fact check myself because I'm like, did I do something wrong? <laughs> I'd like to know. Um, so I think, and I know there will still be some people that disagree, but I think I'm like in the clear. I'm okay with it. Like I said, in like the full video, which you can see right after this as part of this video, like I stand by myself and my pattern and like my technique for writing some of my patterns. First and foremost, um, I'm a crochet artist. Uh, I'm not like YouTuber first, I'm like crocheter first and I sell my finished makes first. Uh, so I wanted to write a couple of patterns that I've used from other people that I didn't love. So my finished makes can be made like faster and easier because those are what I focus mostly on selling. Um, and that's like all I did. I just took some aspects of a pattern that I didn't like, and I had them in my mind, not in front of me. And when I wrote my own pattern, I like took out the aspects I like, added in some aspects that didn't even exist in the original pattern, and put them in because I like these things, like namely pointy spikes and bobble stitch arms and legs. Um, so yes, that's all I did, and I do stand by what I did. But I just wanted to like come and correct. And I really think even though, even though this is chaotic and I didn't need to do any of this, like video or like 
verifying like in the Facebook group. I think the fact that I accidentally cited even the wrong pattern um, and still had people telling me it's too similar just goes to show that like T-Rexes are shaped like T-Rexes. And that's why the patterns look similar, not because I like stole, because I didn't even steal from that pattern. And it's steal from any pattern, but specifically not that one. But I'll let you guys watch like the full video. And um, I said it in like the end of that video, toward the end of that video. But if you do disagree, but you're like keeping your opinion like clean, like nobody's name calling, or like just, you know, if you're being a dick, if you're not being a dick, uh, and you disagree. Like, I would love to hear your perspective on it um, in the comments down below. And yeah, so I'll let you go watch the rest of this video. Okay, so this came about because I said that. And then a person commented on the video that I said it in, um, kind of calling me out. And I kind of perceived a snarky tone, but also like reading text, there is no tone. So I could have just been like incorrectly perceiving that. So like, I'm going to leave it up because I want everything to be like transparent. Um, but I also don't want like anybody attacking me. I don't want anybody attacking her. Uh, I think it wasn't so like aggressive or anything that like that person needs banned or anything. Like, so I just want to be clear. I think the feedback enough was given in like a clear way that like, I'm fine with it there and I'm fine with you guys seeing it because I think it like helps keep things fair, <laughs> if that makes sense. So like everything's just out in the open. But when I said what I said, uh, I also said, this is how I started out writing patterns. I used like inspiration from other patterns and then wrote my own. And I think that was perceived as I take somebody's pattern, I change a couple of things and then I pass it off as my own. Um, and that person wanted to make a comment clearly stating that you can't do that. And I agree you can't do that. What I did, I feel like is very different. And I'm going to explain how that's different. And I'm going to explain how my process goes. So you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from and why I said what I said in the way that I said it. So the pocket dino pattern. And if you've not made it, I like the pattern. If I didn't have my own dino pattern now, I would buy it again. There's nothing inherently wrong with the pattern. It sold well for me at markets. Nine out of 10, because there was some features of it that I didn't like. First off, made with Parfait Chunky, it lives up to its name, Pocket Dino. Not for me, I feel like the bigger but faster I can make something, the better it is for markets. So right out the gate, I'm making a bigger product, which means my starting counts are different, which means the math for the entire pattern is gonna be different. There's not gonna be a row on it that has the same count. Um, and I haven't, I don't know for sure, um, because I've not held them up side by side, but I've made the pocket dino enough times that I remember how it starts. Uh, and I know mine started different, <laughs> which should mean the entire rest of the pattern is different. Um, it's also rest of the pattern different wise because the pocket dino pattern, you slip stitch the arms and legs on after mine are done with bobble stitches. So they're literally a stitch in the pattern that I had to like make the thing and like math it out and figure out where those stitches needed to go to line up with the like head and like the front of the body and like the tail and all the things. Um, so that's math that I did for my own brain as I was working it out, not from anybody else's pattern. I also didn't like how her spikes were. I like big wide triangle spikes. Her spikes were like, I don't even know the stitch and I probably shouldn't say the stitch even if I do, but they were almost like bubbles, like they folded over on themselves. And I didn't love that. I like a nice spiky dino. So mine has like full on spikes. And I think the name of my stitch is like a peacock stitch, Pico stitch, P-I-C-O-T. Um, so don't quote me on that because I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that's how I learned that's like the term I learned for like the variation that I do for mine, which could be 100% wrong. But either way, mine makes spikes. So that's another change. Um, at that point, these dinos only have a body, arms and legs, and spikes. And the body is different. The arms are different. The legs are different. The spikes are different. Therefore, it's a different pattern. Uh, but 
I was in fact inspired by that pattern. I just took aspects from it that I didn't like and changed to suit my needs. And I think if we all take a step back, we can realize that if it's like an animal or a food or like a plant, there's been a thousand variations of those things sold as patterns before. And I don't think anybody is copying anybody. I think that there are a finite number of stitches, there's a finite number of animals, and there's like a finite number of like ways to put shapes together to make a thing. So once we realize that, we can realize that all these different variations of patterns exist just to suit the preference of the designer of that particular pattern. And that's all mine is. It's it's a version of a dinosaur to suit the preference of myself because I wanted like a bigger, easier, faster market make for selling at my markets. My mushroom pattern, and nobody called me out for this one either, so it's kind of weird that this is happening now. Uh, my mushroom pattern, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, was kind of inspired by Katie being creative's mushroom. She has a no sew mushroom. It's like yay big. The like top mushroom cap part is just as long as like the stem part but it's almost cylinder and there's like no rim around it. So I initially started off by just modifying her pattern a little bit by doing a rim because that was just a tiny change. I didn't sell the pattern as my own. I didn't write it down for a free tutorial as my own because it's not my own. That's her pattern. I just added a rim to it. And I tell you guys that every time I show that pattern and show you what I've made, <laughs> uh, that's how I was doing it. But then, you know, I kept looking at it and I'm like, well, I like it. It's okay. It sells pretty well, but I think it would be better if I made it different. So I sat down and I made it different. I kept the dome. I kept the rim around it that I had been adding to hers, but I thought the stem should be smaller and I didn't think it should be a straight cylinder. I made mine taper in. So my pattern evolved out of making her pattern and like noticing the things that I liked about it, noticing the things that I didn't like about it, and then I made my own. And I think we can all agree if I held up her pattern and mine that's like this big but they're very different um and the same thing if i had the like no so pocket dino and my own dino if i held them up i think you guys could see how different they are but i don't know the traditional kind of chubby dino pattern version they all have like a similar body shape so maybe that's why like you guys can't spot the difference as well and maybe not you guys but maybe this particular person couldn't spot the difference but um, I was so taken aback by the comment that I literally went to my Facebook group on that I'm in for crochet on Facebook and like asked like, hey, do you guys think that I'm doing something wrong? Because one, I definitely don't want the thousand plus people that watch my channel to think of me as a thief. That's horrible. And two, I'm in kind of like an educational position and I definitely don't want to be advocating for like stealing, especially if I don't mean to be advocating for stealing. Um, so I just needed like, it's a community of, let me, let me check. A lot of people in this community. It is a community of 82,000 people. And I have uh, about 57 comments currently on this particular post. All pretty much in line with the same like thought process that there's only like a finite number of shapes. There's only a finite number of stitches. There's only a finite number of like plants, animals, food to make. So like if you take it and make it your own, it is then your own. And I've gotten various comments that back that up saying like artists have been inspired by other artists. That's just kind of how it works. Uh, I've gotten a comment like, you know, the same kind of ingredients make like bread. Um, but like there's different recipes for bread because it's like how you use the ingredients and the ratios that changes the like outcome of the bread. Um, we have similar stitches in it, but then we also have different stitches in it, which changes the outcome of the dinosaur. Um, the similar stitches being like some single crochet don't like come for me that I just admitted to stealing because I didn't and I didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just just wanted to address that. Uh, and to make sure it was totally fair. Like I posted a picture from like my market where you could see there was like a pocket dino and mine. I also posted a screenshot from the pattern and from the original pattern and a screenshot from my pattern. Um, so they were like as informed as you guys are. 
and could give like an honest assessment of the situation. So yes, I hope that like clears it up because I feel like it should go without saying, but if I was trying to like pull a fast one, uh, do something nefarious, I probably wouldn't have like name dropped the person I was stealing from. But now we'll get into like how I do my pattern writing. So how do I explain this? First off, I'm like a very type A analytical person. So when I'm like working on a pattern, like creating, crocheting based on somebody else's work, my brain just picks up, okay, like I liked how these things went together to make that shape. Okay, I really like this stitch. That's like how I felt about the bobble stitch. I really just like a bobble stitch. Um, I didn't at first because they were hard, but now that I know how to do them, I really appreciate a bobble stitch. Uh, and a puff stitch, which I just learned apparently is like this slightly smaller version. It has a name. I just was calling it a half double crochet cluster because I think I've seen it one time in a pattern. Um, but apparently it's called a puff stitch. I'll, I'm not fact check that, but there's a lot of people who crochet that know more than me. So um, but yeah, I'll think like I like this. I don't like this. And that then later influences my work. So for example, I like bobble stitches. I think the first time I used like a bobble stitch in place of arms and legs was the chunky boy mushroom pattern. Uh, so now that's made it into a few of my patterns. My ghost has bobble stitch arms. My Frankenstein has bobble stitch arms. My uh, dinosaur has bobble stitch arms or like a variation like the half double crochet cluster. Um, which I call a variation, I don't know if it counts, but whatever, technicalities aside. So I like that, and I've used that throughout my work. Um, and I think we can all agree, just because that one stitch was used that one way and that one pattern, doesn't mean no one else is allowed to use that in place of like arms and legs again in a different pattern. I wouldn't call that stealing, but you can see the inspiration and how it gets carried through people's work. Something I don't like. I don't like sewing. <laughs> sewing sucks. Uh, so you'll find that a lot of my patterns are going to be either no sew or low sew because it's better <laughs> for, in my opinion, it's better in my opinion. Um, it's faster. So that's like an element that I try to, if I can eliminate from patterns, like currently I've been trying to experiment with different ways to do like a no sew cow. Um, I've seen plenty of low sew cows. I've made a few different variations of low sew cows even kind of inspired by other patterns. But ultimately, I want to get to a no so cow. So I haven't bought, bothered writing down my like low so variations because I just, I want to get there. I want to get there. Um, but yes, so that's something that I don't like. That's not carried through my own work. Um, so that's just how it is. And then because I'm analytical, I see the pattern as like maths make shapes. Uh, so I use this example when I talk to people about pattern writing. So I think at this point, we've all probably made like a or a sphere before. So like the head of something, you know, to make a round ball, you're going to increase, increase, increase. And then you're going to like keep the same amount of like stitches for a couple of rows. And then you're going to decrease, decrease, decrease. And that makes a sphere. And that's like how I like see patterns. So if you were to give me a pattern, no pictures, I can like read the pattern and basically draw out what it's going to be because I, that's just how my brain perceives patterns, I guess is the way to see it. And then to do something like an arm of a doll, um, if you don't want to like do the thumb, but the doing like the thumb part's easy too, but you would do maybe not increase like, um, around on the second round, all the way around. Like if you started with four, you might do like a single crochet increase. So it just like opens a little bit. And then the rest of the arm, what is that if not a tube? And to make a tube, you just do the same number of stitches all the way around for as long as you make it. Uh, that's my process. So I just try to look at an animal or a thing that I want to make and like break it into shapes. And then my brain more or less, and I don't, know how to say this without you guys like thinking I'm stealing but my brain will remember okay this shape was in this general pattern I did this by like you know to like do a pill shape like there's the happy pills um you do like the increases and then it's like a tube for a while 
and then you like do the decreases. Like if I want to do something based on like a pill shape, that would be how I would do it. My brain would remember I like learned that shape and that pattern. And then I would, you know, adjust it either bigger or smaller based on what I'm making to make a thing. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry if that's not clear. And I don't remember if I said at the beginning, this is not like a tutorial. This is just my own process. Um, and a lot of my inspiration for the patterns that I'm like working on come from seeing other people's work. And sometimes it comes from doing other people's work and then realizing the things I like and the things I don't. And I then modify it to suit my needs. And if I was simply just making something bigger, like I wouldn't have even bothered taking the time to write it down. Because to make a pattern, if you guys have never make to make, made a pattern, like your own pattern, there's like trial and error and figuring out like where things go. And I had a couple of pattern testers test my triceratops. And I must have like gotten a count wrong or I wrote down a number wrong or what, but they thankfully, and that pattern, which was also inspired by somebody else's work, come at me, bro. Um, it didn't line up right. So this is why we have a pattern testers test because I definitely wouldn't want to sell that to anybody and it not work. Um, but it takes time to like do the trial and error to make the thing. It takes time to like write down the thing. It takes time to have the people pattern test the thing. It takes time to get those notes back and like make the necessary changes. It takes time to take the pictures as you're making it to put in the pattern. It takes time to format the pattern. It takes time to get the pattern listed on Etsy and on Ribbler. It takes time to advertise the pattern. Like, so if I'm changing, like you have to just understand, bro, sister here works like 15 hours a day, seven days a week. I, hand to God, promise you, I'm not going to take the time to like change something minuscule and then write it down to get in a friggin' $2 on a pattern. Even if I sold the same pattern at $2 50 times, which I've never sold a pattern 50 times so far, um, I would only make, what is that, $100. Do you think I'm going to go through the work of stealing somebody and like jeopardizing like my whole platform here over $100? Hell, let's make it 100 times. Do you think I'm going to jeopardize my like whole YouTube and platform over $200? Absolutely not. Insane unfathomable. <laughs> um, and I'm lazy, but I work a lot. So I'm definitely not going to write down a change based on just like something like small, because it's not worth my time to put in that much effort to do something. It, it's just not. <laughs> uh, so I do apologize if it came off that I was like recommending you guys steal because absolutely not. Don't do that. I would be really upset if someone did that to me. And I think we can all agree that every person who's ever designed like a crochet pattern has been in some way inspired by somebody else's crochet pattern for the most part. Um, and to say that you can't take inspiration from somebody is a little bit insane to me. That's like saying those like sunflower, like um, granny square blankets, just because it was made once with sunflowers one time, no one ever can make another crochet sunflower granny square blanket pattern again. Like their sunflower pattern is going to be different than somebody else's sunflower pattern. And that's what makes it okay is the difference. Uh, and I think even the original creator of sunflower granny squares way back when uh, wouldn't be offended by the fact that there's now a ton of variations of this particular thing. Uh, I think we all get into crochet because we like it and like it's fun and there's like an art element to it and we're just out here trying to like make art you know like so I just hope that makes sense and I hope it didn't come off like me being an a-hole to that person because like I'm not and you know I'm just not but I also wanted to like clarify because I wouldn't go so far as to say like I was offended um, but I don't want to be perceived in a negative light. Like that's important to me. Like that would ruin this for me. If you guys like thought crappy of me, you know, uh, that would take like the whole fun out of it. So like, I felt like I really needed to address the situation and I didn't want to just come on here and just like start giving out opinions. I wanted to fact check it. And I've done my best to like fact check the process of like pattern writing with about 82,000 people. Um, not all 82,000 have commented, 
but a fair amount of people who are crocheters have commented and let me know that like what I'm doing is not stealing and I stand by my work. I stand by my process and I'm like really sorry if I offended anybody. Uh, but I really think that you, you just either a misunderstand understood or b uh, need to collect the patterns and like see for yourself because maybe it's not visual enough and I'm not explaining well enough to like see. And yeah. So that's about all I have to say about that. If you guys, and I want to like tread lightly here because I don't want there to be like an argument. If you guys, as other adult people, um, disagree, I welcome that. And I would love to hear your opinions about like why or why not. But I will say I'm leaving the original comment. But it's because I've like read it, seen it, approve it. Cool. Uh, if I see any like snarkiness about me or about her or about each other, if you guys start a healthy debate and somebody turns it into like rude as shit, <laughs> uh, we're not going to do that. Um, I don't think you guys will. I've never had like a mean comment before or anything. So like, I don't think you guys will. But if you guys disagree or if you want to like share your thoughts, like I encourage you to do that because I know this is like kind of a hot button topic. But Yes, I do try to follow all the rules. I don't sell trademark things. I did make a Freddy Krueger and I like, I don't know what I was thinking that night because I made him and then I was like, this is from a movie. <laughs> I can't sell this. Um, so I do want to get rid of him because I don't really, I think he's cool, but I don't really want to keep him. So I brought him to my market and his label on one side says Freddy Krueger and unlike my other labels on the other side, there is no price. So I'm waiting for somebody to pick them up and be like, oh, how much is this? Uh, and then I'm just going to give it to them because I think that's fun. And I'm just here to have fun. I'm not here to steal anybody or steal from anybody or like be mean to anybody, you know? Uh, and yeah, I think I've rambled on enough. And I'm sorry that this wasn't like a clear pattern writing tutorial. Like I, it's hard to explain making shapes out of math. <laughs> uh if anybody else also has like a better explanation of how to make shapes out of math um, in reference to crochet, feel free to like either explain it in the comments or by golly, make your own video and I will send people to your channel um, because I'm not good at explaining it. And it's just hard to get information sometimes out of my head into the world properly as we've seen because we have this whole misunderstanding based on the fact that I said something out of my head and it was not perceived correctly. Um, as that happens sometimes, but yeah. Anyway, if you want more crochet content, the not stolen variety, you can check out this video right here, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!